The human brain is perhaps the most complex and sophisticated structure in the known universe. It contains billions of neurons, each capable of communicating with each other in an intricate and highly coordinated way. But what is perhaps even more fascinating is the phenomenon of consciousness, our subjective experience of the world around us. When we look at a flower, for example, we experience it as a unified whole, with colors, smells, and textures all integrated into a seamless perception. But how does the brain achieve this feat? How does it take the chaotic barrage of sensory information and turn it into a coherent experience of the world? The neuroscience of consciousness is a rapidly evolving field that seeks to answer these questions. Researchers have used a variety of methods, from brain imaging to neural recording, to investigate the neural mechanisms that give rise to our subjective experiences. One key insight from this research is that consciousness arises from the coordinated activity of many different brain regions. Neurons in different parts of the brain communicate with each other using electrical and chemical signals, forming complex networks of activity that give rise to our subjective experience. Some states of consciousness, such as meditation or deep sleep, involve different patterns of brain activity than waking consciousness. In meditation, for example, the brain shows increased activity in regions associated with attention and self-awareness, suggesting that this practice may alter the way we experience the world around us. The neuroscience of consciousness has also shed light on the role of different brain regions in creating our subjective experience. For example, studies have shown that the prefrontal cortex, a region at the front of the brain, plays a key role in self-awareness and decision-making. One of the key challenges in studying consciousness is that it is a subjective experience. We can't directly measure someone else's consciousness or experience. Instead, we have to rely on indirect measures, such as brain activity, behavior, or verbal reports. Neuroscientists however, have used a variety of techniques to study the neural basis of consciousness, including EEG, electroencephalography, a technique that records the electrical activity of the brain using electrodes placed on the scalp. FMRI, functional magnetic resonance imaging, a technique that measures changes in blood flow in the brain, which can be used as a proxy for neural activity. TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, a technique that uses magnetic fields to temporarily disrupt activity in specific brain regions, allowing researchers to study the effects of that disruption on behavior or consciousness. Using these and other techniques, researchers have identified a number of brain regions and networks that are involved in creating our subjective experiences. One such network is the Default Mode Network DMN, a collection of brain regions that are active when we are at rest or engaged in self-referential thinking. Other important brain regions for consciousness include the thalamus, which acts as a relay station for sensory information, and the prefrontal cortex, which is involved in attention, decision-making, and self-awareness. One of the most influential theories of consciousness is the global workspace theory, which suggests that consciousness arises when information is integrated across different brain regions and made available to other brain systems. According to this theory, consciousness is like a spotlight that can shine on different aspects of our experience, allowing us to selectively attend to different stimuli. Another important aspect of consciousness is its relationship to attention. Attention is the process by which we selectively focus on some aspects of our experience while ignoring others. Some researchers have suggested that attention is the gateway to consciousness, allowing us to select which aspects of our experience become conscious. Another fascinating aspect of consciousness is the phenomenon of dreaming. Dreaming involves a different pattern of brain activity than waking consciousness, and researchers have used this to investigate the neural mechanisms underlying conscious experience. Despite these insights, there is still much we don't understand about the neuroscience of consciousness. For example, we don't know how different brain regions communicate with each other to create our subjective experience, or how the brain creates a sense of self. Nonetheless, the study of the neuroscience of consciousness has given us a deeper understanding of what it means to be human. It has revealed the workings of the most complex structure in the known universe, and has opened up new avenues for exploring the nature of our subjective experiences. By continuing to investigate this fascinating topic, we may one day unlock some of the deepest mysteries of the human mind. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.